let us pray. Father, eternal rock of ages, the King of kings, the Lord of God, the Alpha and Omega, I am that I am. To you be the glory. Thank you for the privilege you've given to praise the gospel to the viewers today. May you take the glory in your precious name. Amen and amen. This scripture reading for today's administration is taken from the book of uh, First Kings. First Kings, uh, the thirteenth chapter. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the work of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer this priest of the high priest that born incense upon thee, and men born shall be born upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be pulled out. It came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which has cried again the altar in the better, that he kept put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on me, and his hand which he put forth against him, dried out, so he could not pull it into him again. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God has given by the wall of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored again, and because as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou will give me the house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was his church me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the way, same way the comet. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to the prophet, in, to the, an old prophet. Uh, <clears throat> now they are dwelt in the old prophets in Bethel, and the son came and told him all the work that the man of God has done that day in Bethel, the words which he has spoken unto the king. Then they told also to their father, and their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Sadumin, the ark so this shadow him the axe and he rode their own and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. I said unto him, Are thou the man of God that cometh from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. I said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the law, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink no water there, nor turn again to go by the way thou dost come it. And Ish said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou, and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with me into this house, 
that he may eat bread and drink water, but he lied unto him. So he went by with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass that as he sat at the table, that the word of the Lord of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, for as much as thou art disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord God commanded thee, but came it back and as eating bread and drank water in this place of which the Lord did said to thee, eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sceptre of their fathers. I came to power after he had eaten bread, and after he had drank, I shadow for him the axe for wheat for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, the lion also stood by the carcass. And the old men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion stood by the carcass. And they came and told in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way had the half, he said, Is he the man of God who was disobeyed unto the word of the God? Therefore the Lord has delivered him unto the lion, which ought to him and slay him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me an ass, and they saddle him. And he went and found his carcass cast anyway, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass, the lion not eating the carcass, nor turned the ass. And the prophet took him, took up the carcass of the man of God, and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. And he said, he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass after he had buried him, that he spoke to his son, saying, When he is, when I'm dead, then bury me in the sepulchre wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the same which he cried by the Lord of the Lord against the altar in battle and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May God bless his precious words. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for a time like this, for the privilege you have given us to minister on this occasion, to fear your words. Lord, you are the world from the beginning of the foundation of the world. And the world is the one you have imparted into your pieces, into your faces, that we should continue meditating in it. Oh Lord, as I'm going to the Second part of this administration, which is purely psalm administration, may you take absolute control in your precious name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the theme of the message today is wayward advice. Wayward advice. If you follow the administration, scripture or reading, you will benefit right there how it happened in the biblical reference. And this it happened, listen, hear me. And this it happened in the biblical history in which someone was sent to an errand and one not to eat or drink in that city just perform the divine assignment and go by another way home. Listen attentively. On this juncture, 
this very man had and obeyed the simple instruction. He went to the city and what did whatever it was to be done on the divine assignment. And after that, he was taken another way home as he was trying to move. Alas, an intruder came. The intruder came to confuse him and confused him and redirected his aim to disobey the order given to him on divine as instructions. And this one that he did, he paid dearly for it. Just like an adage that says, obedience is better than sacrifice. He simply obeyed the intruder's instruction and he paid dearly for it. He was severely punished. In the book of uh, the first king, the 13th chapter that I've read to your hearings, and this is happening in the biblical history, which it was terrible. It happened in three episodes in the biblical references. It happened here, and it happened another second time, I tell you. The first one that, if you listen attentively in this one that I've told you right now, you will see how God instructed a prophet, a young prophet, to go to a place and deliver a message there and give him instruction, never you eat nor drink anything in this place. After the assignment, take another way home. But an intruder come from no direction, a whole prophet come and said that, where is the man of God? He has even finished the assignment. I was going. He just came home and uh, he met his sons and uh, the son told him that uh, somebody came for the assignment and he has uh, finished the assignment. He was going, he said, oh, where is he? Then he pursued him and brought him back home and gave him contrary instruction, which was purely lie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Be careful. Tell somebody close to you, be careful. Be careful. Then, I, I read from verse 12. After their father said unto me, what way went he? His sons are saying what the man of God went. Then which way? He said he came from Jordan. Verse 13 say, and he said unto his sons, saddle me and ass. So they saddle him, the ass, and he rode their arm. He was pursuing. You can see, may God help us from the people who are pursuing us after our destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 14, and he went after the man of God and found him sitting on an oak. And he said unto him, How dare the man of God that come from Judah? And he said, I am. Wash here. Then he said, Oh, said unto me, Come with me and eat bread in the 16 sharp fast i said i may not return with thee nor go with thee neither with i eat bread nor drink water with thee for in verse 17 it was said to me by the word of god thou shalt eat no bread nor drink there nor turn again to go by the way that come you can see he even repeated what god already told him but this man insisted See what happened here. But he said to him, I'm a prophet also like that. You can see, we go help us from the fake prophets who appear as angel of God, but they are very dangerous. See the way he was trying to confuse the man of God. That is why we have to be careful. We have to ask to find out what I'm trying to derive from here. I will tell you later. Listen attentively. Then in verse 18, he said, I'm he said to him, I'm a prophet also as they had. And an angel spoke unto him by the word of God, saying, Bring him back with me to thee unto him, the house, that he may eat bread and drink water, but he lied unto him. Praise the Lord. You see, when you have prayed and God has spoken with you, and somebody come from nowhere, continue to convince you, what do you think you're supposed to do yourself? Think about it. 
When somebody came from nowhere, after you have prayed, you have drawn, you have asked, your request has been answered. And somebody came from nowhere and said, they say, they say, what are you supposed to do? You have to find out. You go and find out yourself. Because it is true that you send this fellow to me, then confirmation will be granted. It's there. You can go ahead. Look at somebody who called himself a prophet and went to another prophet and convinced him and lied against me. God deliver us from evil. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible said, he allowed him to eat and drank, but he lied unto him. So in 19, so he went by with him and eat bread in his house and drank water. <laughs> Look at verse 20. It came to, to pass. At the side of the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. <laughs> and he cried unto the man of the God that came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, for as small as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the law, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord has commanded thee, but come back and eat bread, <laughs> water, in this place where God says you should not eat. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> you see? It's a severe punishment. In verse 23, after it came to pass, after eating bread, after he had drunk, he sat for his ass to wait for the prophet whom he had brought him back. And when, and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was on the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion stood by it, by the case. You see, disobedience is dangerous. He was going back because of disobedience. Lion came and killed him and dropped his body, and lion did not even touch his body, and lion didn't touch the ass, the donkey. That is divine instruction. Being disobeyed. And look at the punishment right there. And the same man came back and told him, that, was telling people, oh, he's the man of God. God says, you know it, he ate. That's why he met Waterloo. He was killed by lion. See, then he carried his body and buried him. Find out if anybody comes from you from nowhere. After you have got direction from God, don't let any bavoo you. Stand by your side. Look at what happened in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. When God commanded you not hit the forbidden fruit, Adam was alone. God filled that it was good to have companion. It's not good to be alone in isolation, you know? And if came, if as can we say if came? If came, can we say if is an evil? It's not evil. God wants you hard to support. But the intruder came and convinced a Eve. And Eve disobeyed and ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and went to Adam. Just like the intruder went to this man, the prophet. Adam supposed Adam supposed to not to take that fruit right away because when the woman came, I said the fruit is good. It supposed to shout on him. Where did you get it? He said we should not eat it. And Adam should have gone to back to God. See, the fruit said we should not eat. Yes, he taking it. Well, look, but Adam ate. This prophet ate, all led to death, forbidden fruits. Be careful, may God have mercy on us. Find out if God speaks to you and, some, and one prophet come from nowhere and say, yes, true, it's, it, yeah, I've seen another vision. Go back to God. Ezekiah, when prophet said, go to Ezekiah, that God has informed me that you are, you are going to die, so Ezekiah didn't argue with the prophet Isaiah. Ezekiah just let the prophet left. Isaiah went to God himself. God, I've seen your prophet who said that I should prepare my house. But I don't want to go yet. Ezekiah prayed. The Bible said, Ezekiah faced the wall and prayed and prayed fervently, asking God. And God said, yes, I've answered your prayer. God didn't even give. Ezekiah instruction right there where he was praying. He still sent back the same proverb back to him. That was the 
You know, prayer as to have done to the whole prophet. God said, don't go and eat. You went there and somebody come from nowhere. Instead of you, it's okay. It is true that I should not eat. Let me go back to God who sent me. God, this prophet said, you should have to eat. Then we hear from God. He will not die the premature death. Same, same, a very shameless death, he died. But God have mercy in Jesus. The, the mercy of God went into that came to the garden of Eden and confessed Eve. And uh, Eve, Eve had and went to Adam. Adam supposed to refuse, find out that this is why you gave to me. See what? But both of their heads, you can see, the prophet died. Adam and Eve died, the dead of Esau. But we thank God for Jesus who have come to redeem us back to the paradise. Glory and honor be to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you have enjoyed this ministration tremendously. There are other information that we follow very soon. Thank you. I know you have been blessed tremendously during this ministration. And I know that with God, all things are possible. Don't let anybody deceive you. Pray unto God and let the true men of God pray with you. If there's any revelation, you ask God. God will reveal it to you and you will not be led astray. So for your information, the healing ministry, healing services is coming up in which God wants to perform his own divine miracles, healings of different calibers, different types. And I want you to be a particular of this. We are going to announce this very soon. The place where you can come over, bring people of different infirmities. And Jesus is waiting for you, as I've been doing in all parts of the countries, all over the world. So you have somebody, you have to bring them along with you. But prayer is a physical manifestation, and you'll be glad you do. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Meanwhile, in case of any information regarding the ministration, you can see it on the board there. Any media of information you may like to use, you can communicate with us. The email, the telephone, the mailing address. So please do not hesitate to benefit from this atmosphere of pressure, healings, miracles from God. God is still saying something. And he's ready to meet everybody in the areas of his needs, physically, spiritually, and financially. The God is a great provider. He will provide for you. With any solution to your problem, he is ready to solve it because nothing impossible. Nothing, I say nothing, is impossible. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.